Hi, and welcome once again to Virtual Vision FM. This is your platform to all things spiritual. It is Sunday. It must be 1 o'clock in the afternoon here on the west coast of Canada, and it is 9 p.m. in the UK. And I do have my lovely co-hosts, Nina Ashby and the wonderful Ted Woodruff here with me this evening or this afternoon, wherever you are. And we're just going to have a laid-back kind of show today and uh, just discuss all sorts of different topics and concepts. And you know what? I think we're even going to talk a little bit about where Virtual Vision FM is actually going these days and where we hope to end up. So let's hear from you. This is your spiritual platform, and we want to hear your ideas, your suggestions for guests, for discussion topics, if you want more readings, let us know. Now is your chance. And today, we're also going to be able to bring you from your chat room area where you've been feeling very comfortable and safe and put you right onto the platform with us. Hopefully, you will have headphones, or not headphones, a webcam and a microphone. And that's all we really need. When we do bring you over onto the platform, you will see a screen and you will have to click accept or allow and then you will be on the air with us. And then when you're done, we can move you back. How's that for technology? We're going places. Let's talk to uh, Reverend Ted Woodruff and Nina Ashby. Hi, guys. How are you doing this week? Hello, Era. Hello, everybody in the chat room. Absolutely great. Um, loving the weather. We finally have summer here in the UK, and it's not so baking hot that we're uncomfortable, but it's been glorious, glorious weather. Today was a bit overcast, but we need those time too. It's that time too. So I really appreciate the weather. Whatever the weather is, I'm quite happy because variety is the spice of life, and we certainly have that here in England. You know, it's funny, Nina, not funny, uh, we have been suffering horrendous wildfires here in British Columbia for the past few months, and I mean, even last week I posted a picture that was taken at 12 noon my time, and the sky was literally orange, and mm. from smoke, um, the sunlight being filtered through smoke. We finally had rain yesterday, first rain I think we've had oh. since the middle of May. It hasn't been significant, but it's been a little bit, and it's probably better than right. So yeah, the weather, while it seems like an inane topic to talk about, um, there's some really serious consequences going on um, in a lot of different places, and BC is but one. And my heart goes out to all the firefighters who are fighting these dreadful things, as well as all the wildlife who are trying to relocate themselves in a safe haven. So yeah, that's what's been going on in BC. So our oh has been you know extreme as well how about you Ted what's up with you I don't know what part of the UK um, Nina's living in because we've had really rubbish weather uh, today um, oh, today it, was rubbish <laughs> yeah all oh, oh, right okay yeah I thought oh my god um, we've had we, we have as Nina said you know and the Brits always talk about the weather it's one of those <laughs> Politics, politics, sex, and the weather, the Brits, and uh, the weather being the main one. And I think we mainly moan about it because it's so sort of random. Um, but yeah, it's been having a bit of a go um, here today. Somehow Wimbledon sort of took its part. But yes, as Nina said, it's been a nice sort of, it's been pretty good. And we've had some really hot days and then not so not so bad and, and manageable sort of thing. So yeah. Um, but down here on the coast, I'm 200 yards from the English Channel, which I say so often, it's got its own climate system and you can seriously have sun, rain, hail, tornadoes, snow, all in one day, you know, within a matter of minutes sometimes. It is really most extraordinary to experience it, but it just comes around and goes back on itself. And, and as I say, you can, you can get the extremes of all weather systems um, in the space of one day, but so far so good. Um, it's, uh, yeah, a little bit windy, a little bit rainy today, but uh, we're getting a bit of a summer every so often. As long as you don't blink, you won't miss it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I think this whole thing about wildfires, though, is really interesting because, you know, there are, only, there are certain trees that cannot germinate unless they're they've had the seeds are exposed to wildfire or to ex the extreme heat of fire. And 
that all nature goes through these processes of having to destroy things in order for new life to begin. Isn't that an interesting concept because that even occurs with paradigms here on this level of existence. In order for anything to begin anew, the old paradigm has to be dismantled Indeed. and in order for a new structure to be put into place. So. So the, the earth has its wisdom, and even though we, you know, are in the path of the wildfire or this, it's inconvenient for us to have landslides or mudslides. It's 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 an inconvenient for the animals, etc. There are reasons why Mother Earth does these things. Well, it's it's a natural cycle, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what? There's all these fears of global warming and tsunamis and things going on around the earth plane and I know this might sound a little bit radical but I've always had this pretty much certainty the mother earth will renew herself and we worry ourselves about what we're doing to the planet um, and this that and the other consequence and I appreciate the Amazonian rainforest there's big panic over that and yet nothing substantive is done about it we have nuclear power stations that every so often fail or there's some big disaster we're getting um, extremes of weather all over the all over the earth plane um, and we put up defenses for you know against rain and, and whatever um, that I think it's the Chinese that are doing extraordinary dam situations out on the Mekong River um, and, and there's all this sort of messing with nature and whatever but you know the earth is a force of its own it does have its own uh, not so much identity but but sort of character of personality that personally I'm sure that way beyond our you know our personal existence at this particular juncture um, that whether or not humanity dies out because of natural disasters the earth will continue to be and it will repair itself and probably repair itself remarkably quickly once we as humans uh, have cleared off um, and a whole new exciting life um, form or whatever will develop fr from what is left behind from us so uh, my personal opinion is you know there's all this worry about ozone holes and all of that and what we can do we're not we're just we're just titivating with it and, and we're, we're never going to cure it because we're too greedy to to affect it over a long term so it'll be what it will be and in a few hundred years or millennia time we'll be gone and it, you know the ants will probably take over you know there will be forms of life or the crocodiles alligators sharks dolphins or whatever in the oceans and and uh, probably be a better place for for all concerned without us around that's my opinion on it well it's interesting because i think my my take on all of that is is i i i have to agree there uh but i also feel that Mother Earth knows her role, and her role is to be the playground, is to be the learning field. And so everything that we see going on with Mother Nature and Mother Earth is a direct reflection of what's going on inside of us. And so she's here to be that reflection. And, you know, nothing is going to get fixed until we fix ourselves, really. Uh, I agree with both of you in different respects. I feel that as as, so, as soon as human beings stop trying to control nature for their own well, uh, their own being, and stop having the arrogance to think that we're the most important things on Earth, and that nothing else has sentience <laughs> except humanity, then you know we are digging a hole for ourselves however um, I think that Mother Earth is not just a reflection of, our, of who we are but of its own nature that does persist and will persist after humanity if humanity, you know, when humanity's been smacked across the face, <laughs> so to speak, and um, altered in some kind of way so that the balance of power, shall we say, goes back to its rightful proportion. 
Well, that's interesting, um, and I know I agree, but the, uh, there's another part of me that kind of makes me feel that there's no separation between the two. So, you know, in essence, we're all we're all that, and it, I can't see the dis I can't see Mother Earth in imploding or exploding and never being, you know, for the rest of eternity. I just see it as this is how bad this is how how low we can get it to be because our vibrations are that low and there isn't enough of the opposite which obviously has to be there due to law of polarity um, instead of worrying and, and saying no 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 more global warning no more this no more that we need to get on board with with uh, loving what we do have and when we start to give the love that we already are back into the mix that's when everything will begin to change because we can't we can't expect change if we're taking all the time we need to express what we are and who we are and that which we are and then when we do that that it has the the, the most valid and and phenomenal impact on everything around us because that's who we are you know that's just my take on it there's, it's interesting, Colin sort of said just a little bit earlier that humans are not causing global warming. Um, I was going to ask him to expand on that and he said something there, the earth provides an environment for life to exist in whatever form and we're doing ourselves no good at all but exterminating other life forms for monetary gain and ignorance which is pretty much sort of what we were saying there. Um, Sandra's contributing saying humans should stop ruining nature and covering in concrete and I couldn't agree more there. Um, keep, keep the comments coming folks in the chat from that's great and good yeah. evening to John David Parker. I just wanted to roll back just a, a few moments to, to what Eric was saying about the paradigm shift and the out with the old and in with the new aspect that sort of happened um, and, and how very true that resonated particularly with me and I know I'm doing a slight subject shift here um, but it, it, it's very interesting whilst I don't want to go continue on every show about my mother's passing because people may be getting a bit uh, with that and whatever but most people know that my mother passed in December last year um, and I've taken it in a particularly personal way that there's no sadness there but a gladness for her um, notwithstanding I miss her and I would, would that she was still here um, but it was that particular aspect that Era was just saying about um, out with the old and in with the new in one sense and I'm now getting big energy oompses, thank you, um, is that I experienced a, a most intriguing sort of series of experiences uh, when she passed and then very wise comments made by people thereafter which um, confirmed in a sense what I kind of thought I knew but you don't know, you know it at the time. Now I'll make a bit more sense in a moment in the sense that my mother had been suffering from um, uh, a cancer, I don't like to say the word, only a colonic cancer and myself and everyone around me had been working hard with her consent to improve her condition and hopefully to turn the corner and beat the damn thing. In the event we thought there was a gentle improvement over the months but subsequently all of a sudden in the space of something like four days um, she felt that it, it had her and she couldn't get out of bed um, and she passed very beautifully and amazingly in my I might add um, but it got me to thinking that from that improvement that seemed to be happening over months and months it wasn't a sort of high low high low it was a steady one all of a sudden the decision was made somewhere to take the journey and someone very close to me Glynis and I'll say her name Glynis for she'll have no problem with that pointed out that a lot of the elders were being taken at about that time. Glynis's father hadn't been long past. There were others, Nick, Nick who's not with us tonight, and he won't mind my saying um, his father passed. Um, and no doubt many people had um, parents who who left the earth plane and got their wings, which I think is a beautiful expression of, of getting wings when you pass. Um, but as far as I'm concerned with my mother, that, that transition that she made at the time she made it was made as much by the above as by her in conjunction with the above um, most definitely because there was that sudden decision okay everything appears to be in place down here I'm happy with for example how I Edward is um, happy about where my sister Julie was and, and Claire my niece was 
um, and she'd had the year she wanted. She'd said she wanted to enjoy the garden, have a whole lot of people around the house and whatever, um, and to enjoy the last few months. And we were all hoping that she would enjoy many more months, many more years. But that decision was made, and so it was the passing, in my case, of the elder to, to what I believe is a heavenly realm um, for a reason. And what has then happened is this bittersweet aspect for me where of course I'd rather have my mother still here. However, what is happening here in terms of the Namaste group would not have been happening to the same extent as it is now. And six, seven months on, there are extraordinary things going on. Um, obviously, I've had to put them sort of into action, but they've happened very, very quickly, very, very swiftly. And we have any number of workshops and courses and events and healing exchanges um, and, and all of that that have been my vision for years, which couldn't have happened when my mother was, was still here to the same extent. So there is that bittersweet aspect. I will always consider it that but she clearly made the decision in conjunction with her creator or whatever you, you believe in is on that other side which the veil is very slim and thin I'm glad to report um, that uh, and of course one of the most crucial things for me and I don't usually talk about myself too much I find that ego thing gets into my head am I being ego by talking about me simply because I don't do it that often but the fact that she works through me now now that is a glorious, glorious thing. That so there is an element of sadness. Of course, there's an element of sadness. I can say I'm not sad and I'm glad, but of course, there's a sadness when somebody goes. But when you know that they're still there and they are absolutely channeling through you with the healing energy quicker than I may say, with all due respect to the archangels, quicker than them, and you have other people saying it's her not just me in my head, I mean I could be a nutcase for all I know, um, the other people are saying it, they're, they're seeing, they're experiencing, they're looking at her picture and seeing um, changes in a picture that's on the wall that she does move around or whatever. Um, so yes, the, the, the aspect that I was saying about the paradigm shift of the old out and the new beginnings and whatever, that's a constant for everybody from your hair growing you know going a different color to growing a beard you know it's the old and the new and refresh and you shave it and back, and back it comes absolutely every aspect of life there is an element of death and dying and then renewal and it's the same for departure of loved ones it's the same for mother earth it's the same for losing you know getting changing jobs changing cars changing relationships growth from childhood through to youth and to maturity it's an, a constant evolution of change and life and development and hopefully for the better and if it's not for the better it's for the different you know I, I really I agree you. with that I, I so agree with that and that is all due and I think Nina you'll you'll agree with this that is all about the universal law of rhythm everything has a, a beginning and an end and everything has um, there's just the, the polar opposites and that's the law of polarity but everything has a rhythm the seasons have a rhythm the forest fires and mother nature has a rhythm everything is 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 that and when it comes to evolution the natural evolution of things I think we really have to pay attention how that affects everybody on a personal individual level and Nina I'd like to hear from you as to how your work has evolved from where it used to be to what it is now I mean there is a natural evolution to that as well we can't just stay the same and that's why I'm not one to really dabble in labels I don't like labels because they, they kind of like pin you into uh, something that diminishes you so let's hear from you. How how has your work evolved from where it began to where it is now? The simple explanation is in a spiral. Oh, that's Be cool. Because um As I grow in as I've grown in experience, I've grown in confidence. 
and therefore and because I'm committed always to learning and being open uh, I have deepened my own true understanding which if I use the word understanding it's not just a mental concept it's it's a standing and gathering <laughs> standing under <laughs> you know standing underneath and looking up through the multitude of layers the veils of existence from the physical plane getting it getting an, a true understanding of the etheric plane, that electromagnetic field through healing and how it operates through the world and through individuals worlds as well as my world and then up into the astral plane where emotions and thought forms exist and how they operate and that's a natural world for me because I was born with the gift of seeing auras and then um, a much deeper understanding of the mental plane and the principles of the mental plane and creation and a revisiting of my early experiences with um, passed over souls, angelic beings, spiritual guides, my ability to move um, with consciousness in the higher realms and bring it through to the earth plane with greater clarity not only in terms of my ability to speak to people but also my own um, expansion of my consciousness so that I am conscious when I do it rather than disconnected and unconscious even though sometimes it's like I move over and allow something to some being to speak through me um, I'm still there I'm still present I don't allow myself to drift off someplace and ha not have Nina there anymore so I've learned to I guess navigate these different fields mm -hmm. with with greater understanding and greater consciousness and it's always very humbling and it's always a great privilege to do that I also have the understanding now that I don't have to call myself a healer or a clairvoyant or a medium or any of those Those things again, right? right yeah exactly I just need to be and if I can be my best Nina and shine th from my connection then I'm always doing the work it's not just when I sit down yeah. with a client in front of me who wants that wisdom it's it's yeah. about it's about shining out and yeah. I think that that's you know when when I am seamlessly doing the work that's been my biggest achievement and after many many decades of having had com more compartmentalized aspects or identification with different aspects of the work and my pathway has been varied um, to bring me to where I am now and to bring that understanding to me well I think the pathway is is vital and I think we really um, would be doing an injustice if we didn't kind of um, explore that uh, concept just a little bit but there's one thing that you said there that really caught my ear because the Council of Twelve is always telling you there's absolutely nothing that you have to do that's right there is everything that you have to be that's right and if you just be then all things unfold effortlessly but it's when the humanness starts to become involved that we have to force the direction of the river in order to go where we think we should when in essence you don't even have to do that you just have to be that you just have to be who you are and allow that divinity to to be expressed at all times I think that's perfection perfection I agree. And the other thing, though, that I think is that 
sometimes we need to have the labels to help other people understand what seems so natural to us and what wasn't so natural to us at one point in time. And sometimes we need, in order to communicate concepts, or we have to have the clairvoyant label or healer label because it, it's convenient, but to get stuck in that is not useful. Yeah, you know, I, I totally agree. And, you know, I just, I just have to think, you know, like, again, the label, the label situation is something that I've never been comfortable with. I don't like calling myself a psychic medium. For one thing, that's redundant. If you're a medium, you're automatically psychic. Exactly. Not all psychics are mediums, but all mediums are psychic. But people don't get that, and it's almost like we we have to speak in terms that are easily understood, but to me they're not quite valid. And so <laughs> if I just allow myself, I don't know what the heck that was, that sounds My like dog. a dog. I'm so sorry. That was no, Mr. no. He was going, yeah, yeah, woof, woof. Yeah. Um, but, the, but the whole thing is, is that if you label yourself in, in one little box and say, okay, Era, you're a psychic medium, and that's where forever you shall stay, then I am missing out opportunities for my own evolution, thinking that this is all I am. And really, if this is all you are, then you are not expressing who you came here to be. Because the whole reason for us being here is that natural soul evolution and to expand into all that we could be and just don't realize at the time. So your work, my work, you know, and I can only speak to my work, is evolving all the time. And you know what's interesting is that, yes, I'm psychic and yes, I'm a medium and I've been this way all my life. I, I've always seen spirit, talked to spirit. Um, tried to convince my mother it was okay. She was like, no, it's not. <laughs> right? So I've always had that aspect. But as the years went by, that, that was just what people are mesmerized by. What the work transmuted into was the empowerment issue, where my mandate uh, on a soul level is to empower people to become who they came here to be. And that can be, there's souls that are available, the universal laws create and consciously, deliberately and consciously effect change just by how you feel and what you are thinking. There's so many different things. Then came the channeling, although I have to tell you the channeling has always been there too, now that I sort of like connect the dots backwards. And yet when I do events and I bring through the most magnificent, powerful energy, the Council of Twelve, who are so ready and willing to speak, all I get is, well, where's my great aunt Martha who died 20 years ago? And I'm like, okay, we can go there. You know, the people aren't ready to make the shift into... Well, no, it's not that they don't want to make a shift. They don't want what they perceive is to be what's important to them to make a shift into a different area. They want me to stay forever as that person where they can go and talk to Great Aunt Martha. If I try and deviate from that, they're not really accepting of it. But that is the natural evolution of all of us, especially if we're being of service. That service has to, has to um, evolve as well. Don't you think... Yes, but, you know, what we have to understand also is that people evolve and grow at different rates. And we can't, you know, we're here to show a different vibrational frequency and what could be possible. But until they're ready to make the shift themselves, to oh, yeah. pl plug in and... and and experience, allow themselves that experience, then yeah. we, you know, they will continue to ask those questions. Yeah, and, and that's fine. I don't mind, you know, it because it's not my job to go out on a crusade and drag all no. these people with me, whether kicking and screaming. Um, I do what I do, and as long as I'm evolving, those that that can benefit from that evolution 
will always be attracted in and the ones that need that other aspect of me will be attracted in. It's not a big deal. I'm just, you know, finding it interesting sure. labels that people kind of put on you are the label that they want or the label that they need and not necessarily the label that I am destined to wear this lifetime. Does that make sense? Sure. Good. Absolutely. Can I, just, can I just say something about this? It's interesting you say about labels and whatever. Um, my, my take on this, and I hear what you say, is that, you know, the, the reason sometimes labels are required is in a very practical sense is that we identify ourselves to the world as simple as that and okay. and I'll give you an example that were I just Ted Woodroff okay I would be just Ted Woodroff it's difficult to imagine me without the rev going on um, when I trotted up to Wembley and engaged with David I because I've got to throw his name in at some point during this show um, I was introduced by our dear friend Simon Ludgate as hey this is Father uh, Rev Ted he's known as Father Ted actually I wasn't that I had ever remembered but that's how I was introduced to the guy and then I was known at the people's voice and around by many people as Father Ted it was a very lovely avuncular sort of aspect to it um, it identifies me now what I wished to do and still wish to do is to take the word out there it's not about ego absolutely not about ego but I want to be the f I'm happy to be the face or one face of many of healing and angelic and spirituality that gets the word out there across the globe that's my mission to do that and in a small way but effective way I get out there on social media I'm on this show I'm on other radio stations or whatever um, and I'm you know working locally in, in, in the Kent area I'm quite happy to be the face of uh, one aspect of spirituality down in a small part of Kent and I don't mind if I get known across the UK and across the world as one guy who had just an impact and if I only affect one person um, positively then, then my job is done. So I do think this question of labels, um, it, it has an, a requirement and a need to identify but what people shouldn't do is get wrapped up in necessarily the um, what, what they don't necessarily understand about the label, i.e. with yourself, Era, as an international medium, but then that identifies Era Parisian as not just a nice name of Era Parisian, which is quite a cool sort of stage name, I would pr pr suggest. Um, it, it, it identifies for you for who you are. Oh, yes, that she is an international medium. But if you've got a brain about you, you are a whole lot more than what your title is where a sir, a lord, a lady or people with PhD after their name or BA or, or, or whatever and honours that's not who you actually are it's just an additional title that tells the world that you have some experience in a certain area but as I say you are a whole lot more than that label uh, as we put it I mean none of us want to be you know like a supermarket produce and have literally labels put on us and I think that may be where some people kick off but it, it identifies us to um, locals well um, the masses. Yeah. and I agree I mean there there's there's a certain point where they're required how else will we take you know if we say to someone oh bring me a knife or bring me a fork that's a label that's a name. We need those to navigate this plane of existence for sure. But that doesn't define who we are. And you're quite right. There's a whole lot more behind behind the label, and that is the person and the spirit. And then, you know, if, if it takes Ted Woodruff Reverend or Ted Woodruff Healer to identify that this is a person that on the surface wears this title and can do these things it's by interacting that then they'll be able to see that there's so much more and they will they will want to experience the so much more most definitely but at their own time and that's what Nina was saying you know everybody reaches that at the right time so what I was trying to get at is that the label doesn't need to put you in a box and put you on a shelf and say well it's your time to come out because you're a medium um, you know, I mean, we need to evolve past the box that, that people see us in and that often we can get trapped by seeing ourselves as that too. Oh yeah, if we, if we trap ourselves then we're lost. Um, but I think people will forever put 
uh, spiritual people into a box and for example in the case of mediums there will still be a, for a certain generation in this country as assuming the mystic meg aspect that, that you sat down at Brighton seafront behind a load of curtains and you dive in and there'll be this funny little old lady looking over a crystal ball and giving you readings and telling you how many children you're going to have that you're going to meet, meet uh, in the case of a woman, you know, a tall, dark, handsome stranger, well, maybe for a man, I don't know, a tall, dark, handsome stranger, um, that the, we, we, the, the, the populace do get fixed in, in their views of um, spiritual aspects. And another thing on the spiritual side, you see, the, the, there's spiritual people, or people who are working in the spiritual, and then there are spiritualists, which is a whole different aspect from to my mind uh, of uh, you know there are spiritualists and there are spiritual workers and there are so many different angles to the spiritual um, that perhaps we've labeled ourselves by saying we work with spirit and all of that so we give this impression of mysticism unintentionally or or, or mystique and people don't quite get it and think that you you know you talk to the dead don't you and that sort of thing um, and so it takes probably years decades of your life if you get the chance to explain well actually you know consciousness I mean you know you could, you could talk all day about death and, and the comparatives across the world of how the Brits in comparison to the Peruvians deal with the passing of, of the souls and their belief system um, that it, it, it's just there's a lot of ignorance out there and there's there's also a lot of knowledge out there but there are a lot of people who are very fixed in their day-to-day -day, what they're doing and so they will just say oh a mystic not of interest to me because I've got my head down, I'm working, I've got the family, I've got the children, um, I have other more important things to be thinking about. So we get labelled and we may never break that label with some people because we're well, yeah, but that's not what we're here weirdos. for. Yeah, no, that's, that's not actually what we're here for, no. But we're also not here we're to, not here to kids, go okay. out and convince the, the ones who don't want to be convinced, who aren't interested. There's no point in trying to do that. You're banging your head against the brick wall. You need to be addressing the people who, in my case, is a healer, uh, you know, people who are in distress and pain and discomfort or whatever. In the case of you ladies with, with your readings and the comfort you bring through that and, and, and you know, you said to me, I've said in the past, you know, I'm not a medium. You go, oh, but Ted, but you are. I, I could equally say to you ladies, you know, you're healers. And you may say, no, no, we're not. Actually, you are healers in your own right because of the comfort you bring, the confirmation of the continuation of consciousness and existence. That, that uh, So, hey, I can say it, for, you know, for, not for the first time on here, that there is no such thing as death. There is not an end to that. It is, coming back to what we were saying earlier, a newness, a new wonderful form of existence when we step off this particular mm. thing. Um, and if that's one thing we could tell one person and get it through to them, that death is not the end and death is not disaster and death is not black, that we, certainly in the UK we're of that mind, where other, cult other cultures do actually celebrate um, death and, and, and transition because they kind of get it sometimes in other um, you know we say we're civilized in the West I don't agree well, with that you know, one it's one thing that I'm always striving to do because I'm let's face it I'm a little Virgo and everything has to be logical and rational and practical and what never has flown in in my belief structure is the airy fairy business like making it more dramatic and theatrical I don't, I, I can't abide by that. Who we are is basic. It's just basic. It's, it's a natural birthright. It's who we are. And so, you know, the other part of my mandate is, and I do this with every client I sit with, I swear, is not only to empower individuals to be exactly who they came here to be, but I also have a mandate to demystify the mystical. There's absolutely nothing mystical about what we do. It's who we are. And the more people begin to understand the nature of themselves and the power and the nature of the energy, wow, what a different world we live in. What do you think, Nina? I agree. I mean, I get a lot of people coming to see me, particularly when I work in my role in, it's at, I work in a big department store in London called Selfridges. And... Um, twice a week as part of what I do and a lot of them come and they say well I've always been interested in this or I've always had these feelings but I'm a bit scared about it and I said 
you know, and I've always thought I wanted to learn something, but I'm scared of it. I said, well, in this case, you know, knowledge and education will help you understand what it is, so you don't have to be scared of it, because there are explanations behind these phenomena. Even though you can't, you may not be able to see it, you have an experience, and that experience is real and, rec and replicable. Yes. And therefore, it is real. Just because you can't see something doesn't mean it's not real. And so this is about expanding your view of what reality can, it does um, encompass. And um, the other thing I wanted to add as well is, is that one can call it fortune telling, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. I do that a lot with my clients, but it's not really fortune telling because people make their own fortunes. Yes. Or misfortunes <laughs> in many res many respects. Mm -hmm. And so my job is to say this is this is your, you know, what your mission is. This is how you're doing on your pathway. This is what you've created. These are the patterns and these are the choices that you made in creating that and you can make other choices. So even if we're talking about attracting a lover or a husband or your relationships with your children or your job, it's all about consciousness because this is the field where we play out our consciousness and yeah. where we can realize it. And therefore there is no separation between heaven and earth. There's only um, these different levels of manifestation that and it, so it gets a little bit confusing and it sounds all mystical and it sounds all but we can demystify it by the language that we use yeah. and the transmission of information that we we give. Yeah. Now I see that Dan in the chat room here, he's made a wonderful comment. He says, thankfully we are all divine beings in the flesh. Some of us have not realized our divinity and act as such, etc. And that's so true. And that's the nature of the evo of the evolution of the path. Is that we are here to we come here having forgotten to remember who we are. And so <laughs> the whole pathway to me is that remembrance and that that respect and and the unconditional love of self in order for that remembering to to come back. And, you know, I just had this conversation with someone um, on Facebook not too long ago, and it was about the nature of unconditional love. And the Council of Twelve was, was very, very stern with me. They don't get stern often, but they were really wanting to emphasize what was um, going on here. And that is we all profess to be loving unconditionally, but as soon as we throw a judgment in there, that goes out the window. We're no longer loving unconditionally. And so everybody is out here seeking love. They just need to be validated. They need to feel special. They need to feel the warm and fuzzies. They need to be loved. And, and they will seek it out under some of the most awkward circumstances in order to get that, that instant gratification. But really, unconditional love is who we are. We came here to express it, not to find it. We're already it. And so, again, the council is showing that we have everything backwards, right? Instead of, you know, coming onto this plane of existence and running after, chasing after something elusive, we're here to stop and take a deep breath and remember that's who we already are. Now we need to be expressing it. And when you do that, everything shifts and changes and you start attracting that which matches in immediately. So, you know, I think that's... Um, a lot of people don't understand that, and so they're they're quickly they're in pain. And what do you do when you're in pain? You lash out against others, and so that they feel your pain, or feel their own pain. You know, in alignment with what your feelings. Sandra's in your divinity. Right. Sandra's made a really good point. You become who you are when you are not confined by others, as in childhood, or others' perceptions of how you should be. Well, so there's a there's a. There's socialization process where we everything because we live in this dualistic world we're seeing things as through a glass darkly you know we get this reflective quality and 
unfortunately, glass darkly is about where it is because we have been programmed, socially programmed to deny our divinity, to go to disconnection rather than con a state of connection. Mm -hmm. And yet we all know what love is because we have that have had we have glimpses of it through periods of our life but it's very hard to sustain well it it is because of the nature of where we're trying to express it but yes. you know again i don't want people to think well we're only human that's all we can expect when we're more than human and that's what we came here to remember that we can rise above the humanness and experience the true divinity and power of who we actually are and yet we're too we're too quick to say well that's just the way life is or that's just the way people are and oh well what can you do when really it isn't about anybody else it's about what you're expressing and so I, I agree you know, I agree we're not victims of the conditioning even we all have been conditioned into some sort of domesticity for sure but we're not victims of our past. The past does not define who we are. The, the past has a full potential to enhance who we are. But if we're full victim to the conditioning and we don't rise above the humanness, then we're going to be paralyzed on that part of the path. And, so, and then we become spectators in life. We don't really participate in living life to the fullest. That's a great point. You know, you know the past and the future I'm always reminding people the past and the future don't exist. Yeah. You know, the past, yes, you have a past. But what you choose to remember about your past is what's significant. What you choose to hold on to about your past is what exists now. And mm -hmm. what you choose to future what to fantasize about your future is only exists now the past and the future take care of themselves it's only now that matters and in the now it is yes. essential to reach for that connection it's you true. always have the choice to reach for that connection if you're grieving something in your past you're doing it now yeah. and if you're dreaming about something in the future you're doing it now that's the only time that matters is right this moment and what you're doing with your power which is nothing more than your focus Right? Right, exactly. So, you know, you are in control of your path. Absolutely. Now, I just want to remind viewers here that are live in the chat room that you can come onto the platform and make your statement, yeah. ask your questions, um, change the topic if you like. You can, you can just do anything you want. What I suggest you do is in the chat room, you have a feature that allows you to broadcast a question. And so if you find that little feature, type your question, use it, and when we see that hand go up on our end, we can then bring you into the chat room. Just remember that when you come on, you will be asked to either accept or allow on one screen, and once you do that, you will come on effortlessly. You do have to have a working webcam and a working mic. So. Let's get somebody on the air with us. This is this is the fun part. This is yeah. technology at its best, hopefully, as I cross everything I own. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Come on to the show. We want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, I mean, it is your platform, and, and this kind of technology allows it to become more your platform, so use it for sure. Ted? Absolutely. Um, I just know something on regard of going back to that aspect of death and transition that Colin came out with something that resonated with me. Um, he says that what we term as death, our force, or if you like spirit moves to another dimension, we as an energy will never die. That is exactly what I've been saying to myself for years and, and over the radio TV um, you know, for several it's, months it's, now. I, I so agree with that. We don't die. We are here. I mean, we are here to now get this. This is big. And I don't care if you believe it or not. I mean, that doesn't even matter to me. But we are here um, expanding consciousness, but we're also expanding eternity. That's what gives us eternity. So every little person on the planet is in an expansion process. And so what's that doing to the concept of, you know, the eternal, right? It just keeps on because energy cannot be destroyed. There you go. Ooh. 
Oh, that was big, actually. Yeah, it was. I mean, I'm not daft, but that's actually thrown my head around in a circle because my concept of, um, yeah, okay, the, you know, it's like the universe it, it, it is infinite. Um, that it can is. actually get the head spinning because you try to define infinity and then you ask yourself what's beyond that infinity. Um, yeah, makes my head dizzy. And I've had an evening or two 20 years ago with a bottle of rum and three friends and we um, nearly sent our heads spinning completely trying to define infinity and the same with eternity actually which means that all of us here say for example this evening are, are forever connected within the conscious energy um, and so we will always know each other so that may be good or bad news for whomsoever. Mm -hmm. It's good news Ted, very good news. Are there restrooms and break areas where you could just go and have a bit of peace and quiet away from the thronging masses? So, Ted, coming yeah. back to our, to Ara's, Ara's original question to me, I'm going to pose it to you. Tell us about where you started your pathway to where you are now and how that's changed. I'd be uh, really interested. Yeah, have me on a timer, okay, um, because, um, <laughs> okay. well, you know, back in the day, a few years ago, I, I went up, I think the first radio show that I did was on Peterborough FM with a, um, a lovely lady, uh, Valentine St. Alban, and I'd seen her on Conscious TV and thought, uh, I need to connect with this person, and so I got an invite up on, onto the radio show. Um, and I was nervous as anything. I had no idea what to expect. I, you know, I, you have these visions of a microphone being put in front of you, and you're going to have to talk on subject. And uh, you, you know, I was not comfy. To st you know, but actually, radio shows aren't anything actually like that for the benefit of anyone who's watching, who's going to be a guest or confirmed for those who have been guests. Um, you know, the, the, a good uh, host will, will guide you through your journey. Um, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, uh, I've had what I feel personally has been a very interesting life so far, and it, it remains interesting and, and is very exciting and will forever be so because there's so many experiences to have. Um, my earliest memories were that when I was seven or eight years old, I was seeking answers to. Um, life, the, the question of life, and I was brought up uh, uh, as Church of England and a good Christian boy, and I carried the cross in, in Great Chart Church, which is local to here, and I was very proud to do that, and I'm proud that I did it now, and it's where we'll be having the service for mum in a few weeks' time for the ash scattering, so it'll be interesting to be maybe doing an address there um, as an adult, as opposed to the guy who was crucified. Um, but at seven or eight years old, I was asking questions about God and the angels and religion and belief and, and, and all of that because I wasn't, as I still am not, in a sense, content with being told that God is omniscient, omnipresent, he's all around or it's all around or whatever. Um, I was curious about God sitting on a cloud with a big long white beard and a white robe surrounded by angelic beings. It, it didn't seem practical even at that early age. Um, and my argument has been since discovering my answers to it and continue to this day is that we are taught certainly in the UK about God and the angels and religion and, and that belief system uh, and there's a variety of different um, aspects to, to, to Christianity. There's the, in this country there's Roman Catholicism, there's Methodist, there's Pentecostalist, Seventh-day Adventist, Jehovah's Witnesses, a whole series of them. And then across the world the amount of different religions from Islam um, to Sikhism to Buddhism to, to whatever. I, I wanted the answers. And so for the next so many years, I found myself at any opportunity of meeting with a Roman Catholic priest, I would ask what God was and whether they could explain it to me. Uh, certainly Church of England rectors, etc. Uh, would you explain it to me? I would talk to um, imams and to Sikhs and, and all different ones. And, and I didn't get the answer that satisfied me until one day in 1994, and I remember it very clearly, I strolled into Bromley to a psychic fair. I just was on the verge of leaving the job I was in um, in the prison service, and I'd had a particularly sort of unpleasant experience, and and 
uh, post-traumatic stress had, had uh, been diagnosed. And I walked in in rather a haze into a psychic fair and I engaged with a guy called Ian Hinton, who's now a life coach up in Norfolk. And he was the first guy who explained spiritual matters to me in a way that I got. And I'll never forget Ian because if he happens to be listening or subsequent listens, he, he reminded me of, a, of an armed robber, bless you Ian. Um, he had a long sort of face. I mean, I shouldn't label armed robbers, but he just looked like one. He was smoking Rothmans, and he had a Porsche 911 sitting outside, which greatly appealed to me, both the cigarettes and, and the, the Porsche, which I was and am still a fan. But for two hours we talked, at no cost to me, and he was such a down-to-earth, normal guy. And I sat down in front of him, and he said, um, you're sitting on the wrong side of the table. So I went to move chairs. He said, no, no, you should be sitting on this side. Now, this was 21 years ago. So, you know, um, I never thought I would be in the position where I, you know, early days. But he explained the silver um, silver cord that comes from the heavenly realm down to the earth plane mm -hmm. and back the other way, how people are born uh, down here. And there's sadness in the heavens and there's great rejoicing down here. And then when somebody passes away, there's great mourning down on the earth plane and great rejoicing in the heavens. Now, in two hours, there was a lot more than that sort of said, but he was the one that, that resonated with me, and I, and I got it. I got then and there for me the, the concept of life, death, and, and kind of what the meaning of life was for the first time, and I would have been 32, 34, something like that. He was also the guy who I sat in front of, and I'd heard about auras, but I didn't really know about what they were. Um, and at one point he looked at me and he said, are you okay? And I said, well, no, in the sense that your head's just lit up around you. Uh, I said, it's like, a, and it was, it was like a golden light appeared around his head. And I was looking for a light source and, and whatever. And he looked at me very straight and said very uh, averagely, um, oh, that's my aura. Very matter of fact, that's my aura. He said, if you look for it, you won't see it. Um, if you don't look for it, you will. And it gradually sort of disappeared. Well, that was 20-odd years ago, without giving my age away. Um, and so the job, yeah, the prison service ended, uh, into came out of the job into auctioneering and an art dealing, whatever period of life. And then 2003, had the heart attack. And that was the real kickstart for me, in the sense. And I, I've always believed I had that as a sort of like, stop you dead in what you're doing, almost dead. Um, and now is the spiritual work starts um, and I'll, I'll keep this relatively brief because I did warn you that I've had what I think is an interesting life and there are many facets to it but 2003 was a heart attack was sorted out with a stent whatever but in the bed next to me there happened to be there happened to be a Reiki master lady who had an enormous influence on my life from then onwards and at the time they had more laughter and love and, and enjoyment in the cardiac unit that they'd ever experienced and it basically developed exponentially from there so it's been particularly for the last 12 years that I've been working um, within the direct hands-on healing aspect and it was a journey that started when I, when I was conscious of from the age of about seven or eight um, but all the experiences I've had, you know, the tough environment of two high security jails, um, I look back sometimes and think I wouldn't be the man I am now if I hadn't done that. Mm -hmm. And I survived it and I did a good job as far as I could tell and made a lot of good friends and met, you know, I, I you know, I had a few of the edges rubbed off this, this grammar school boy. Um, I, was, I was battered a few times physically and emotionally um, to where I'm at now. Jump forward to where I am now, which is facilitating a lot of new people coming on the block, people with amazing talents, skills, gifts, blessings, call it what you will, um, where I'm in that position at a relatively young age of 52 to be able to facilitate people who are coming through, whether they be mediums, hands-on healers, angelically connected or whatever. So yeah, a full life, I could go more. Um, I'm conscious that we're just past 10 and I don't know where that hour's gone. So um, <laughs> yeah, thanks for the question, Nina. I hope that gave you a flavor well, of, it's of so what my life has been like. It's so interesting to hear about people's pathways, and I think that um, um, I said that my life was a spiral because you start with a small, with a, a series of questions and perceptions, and then you, you know, um, grow, and you always come back to the center. But but 
at another level of understanding and that's very much what you've expressed too um, this kind of spiral journey um, yeah. revisiting what you already know but then being able to perceive it in another way exactly. and um, that's kind of what our auras are like and that's what the universe is like it's not um, time and space are it's very hard to get your head around it. It is that infinite because we are, we live in a finite world. So to describe infinity is is too mind-boggling. But but um, the more I work at the higher levels in the Akashic record, for example, I I know that um, this concept of time is just irrelevant. And we can redefine everything that we do and are. And and that is what's so amazing, so inspiring. And that that just isn't that just isn't there for people in the know. No. That's not there for people who live a spiritual kind of existence. This is for each and every physical being on the planet that you are in control. You're in control of your physical healing. You're in control of your physical in, in your mental spiritual well-being. You are this infinite most powerful flow of universal source energy and it is the power that creates worlds. How can you not? But we've been like we discussed earlier been conditioned and downsized quite a bit in our perception of who we are. And that's where the dilemma is for many, many people, for sure. That's an interesting kind of um, pathway for you, Ted. And you know, I, it's funny. I was talking to someone, and this person actually is going to be a, a guest on our show in August. I'm really excited about her. Um, and we were talking about all sorts of things, but the path kind of came up. And I realized where I came from. The past is is is. Um, not somewhere that I want to go back and do, right? I mean, it is what it is. But how I look at it is just the gory details, and we all have them. We all have them. And the council has always taught me that it doesn't matter what happened, it's what you do with what happened that makes the difference, that allows you to grow. And a lot of us get paralyzed in the, the catalyst of, of um, contrasting experiences that just keep us on the sidelines in life. Actually, can I just say there, yeah, the experience, you know, when, when I do healings, I, I encourage people to not go back to how they felt when they entered, okay, not to go back into the past. And I've had a little bit of a jury out on past life regressions and all that sort of thing, although I'm very open, open more now to the idea. But... Uh, and also, I don't usually talk about myself a lot, believe it or not, but Nina asking one sort of simple line question sets me off on a whole thing. But I do think, actually, what we do as co-hosts when we have guests on and ask about the guest um, journey through the, to where they're at now, and the same for us, Aaron, Nina, and myself, and, and Nick when he's around, and, uh, and, and JDP is a guest and a friend and whatever, it, it, it serves a purpose, a really strong purpose to explain to people where we started whether it was at age 5, 7, 15 and we ha or we suddenly had this sudden thing like like I mentioned him again David Icke suddenly had this one thing happen I think it, it serves a really good purpose for people to realize that we are actually normal people having an extraordinary experience with our lives sure. and what, I was saying, what I was saying Ted is that we don't have to live there we no. don't allow it to define who we are. But oh, no, no, no. The only time I talk about it is when it's to show that, you know, nobody's life is easy. We all have those kinds of experiences that we wished we hadn't. But they are there for a purpose. And if we're using them with intent for, the, for an appropriate way to be of benefit to, to others, then absolutely it matters yeah, that's, that's where I was at saying that it, it, it will teach people that we we are normal people we've had some really crazy moments in our life some some real negatives and, and how we dealt with them but also that you can get to where you wish to get even though you yeah. don't know who you're gonna get there um, because we're normal people we are just normal people but we've we've accessed 
or, or, or recognize it or heard the signs or, or sort it out for ourselves, but we're no better and no, no different actually to any one person listening here, listening later or whatever. And that's the thing too, that there's two things that I hear all the time that completely boggle my mind and it causes me to chuckle a little bit on the inside. And the one thing is, is well, you're spiritual, you don't know what it's like to suffer. <laughs> Hello. <Hi. Bay>. Hello. <laughs> oh, really? Mm. We're here mastering all that stuff, and it might seem that we're absolved. We're not. We just deal with it a little bit differently because we have an understanding of it, and we know that there's more to us than our experiences tell us. And the other thing that um, makes me kind of chuckle sometimes is the fact that some people say, I would love to be spiritual, but, you know, life gets in the way. Hmm. And I, I, you know, I do the that Vic, RCA Victor dog thing. I'm like, yeah, really? <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, it's, it's like, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but, but spirituality is the way of life. It is not... Um, Separate. Something you make time for, basically. So I just want people to understand in the chat room, you can come on, join us in the show, hit your broadcast button, and we'll be sure to slide you on over. It's very easy to do. And hey, we've got, well, Ted's, Ted's a reader. He has cards, and he can pick up on stuff. Nina's a reader. I'm a reader. Who knows? There might be a reading involved. Hello. Right. Yeah. Right back to my yeah. cards. I'll yeah. be back. So... <laughs> Just that it's fine for us to talk about what we do, but sometimes we should demonstrate what we do as well. And so that gives a frame of reference as to what the heck we're all talking about. Right, Nina? That's right. You know, we love to share what we have to offer, which is why Virtual Vision FM exists in its current form. Um, and was uh, an idea born of Ara's mind and has been growing and evolving since and we would like to have you evolve with us and join us in this new aspect of our platform so you can join into the discussion and we can see your face and 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 you can ask your questions and have your reaction to what we can visibly see your reaction to when we give a reading or when we offer some some kind of truth or energy in your direction, how you receive it, and other people can see that as well. So, uh, Now that you brought that up, I think we should talk a little bit about where Virtual Vision FM is going. And yes, we're going to have every show where you can join in and become part of the platform and and heard this is your platform and I can't stress enough um, that this is the way to go. Now we had put out a call, a couple of calls, several times for virtual visionary MP3s. Now unfortunately, with this platform, we are unable to play them and do them justice the way they deserve. So what we're planning on doing, if you don't mind, is now in today's new technology we have the capacity now to create little videos of ourselves so why not send us a video of yourself stating your name and if you feel comfortable with first name only that's great uh, first name uh, your location and that you're a virtual visionary and send us that YouTube video and it should be YouTube we will put it on our website and we'll put it on our Facebook page and you will be amazed at how many people all over the world um, can connect with each other and it's really it would be interesting to see how far-reaching the energy of Virtual Vision FM truly is. We're going to have some guests as well and what we're going to start doing right Nina is to do hopefully weekly or bi-weekly um, promo videos to let you know what's coming up so that you can mark your calendars appropriately. So there we go. And um, we have some amazing guests coming up. I mean, really amazing guests. I mean, we always have pretty great guests, but you're going to you're just going to love it. And I think that um, we're having some remarkable readers coming on and we would love to have you have a reading and be visible while you're having a reading. Um, and uh, so yeah, join us because 
being on the chat sh being in the chat room is great, but also being able to see you is great too. Exactly, and I can tell you, uh, Nina was helping me out um, with a test run for a future guest, and to make sure that she could access the platform, okay, and she could. And we we spent some time speaking with her, and we're really excited to have Elaine Thorpe on the show with us on July 26. Now, if you recall, Elaine Thorpe was on our show when we were on Blog Talk Radio, and she channels the energy called uh, Jonathan and uh, and Sophie, a little girl named Sophie, and and a few others. And yes. Rob was really. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was really impressive and and profound just listening to her. You can just imagine what it's going to be like to actually see her do that. And that's what this platform is going to be able to do. And we'll be able to bring you onto the platform with us so that you can ask Jonathan or whoever she's channeling at the time a question. So there's just so many new things happening. We really want you to be an active participant in all of it. So please, if you have a show idea, if you have a guest idea, if you have a topic for discussion that you would like us all to have that here on today's show, hit your broadcast button. We'll, we're more than uh, eager to speak with you and, and hear what you have to say. And I just want to acknowledge Alfie in the chat room. He is saying, could you find and play my virtual visionary clip? Uh, we were quite fortunate to receive an MP3 from you, Alfie, and unfortunately, we cannot play the clips on the MP3s on this platform. That's why we're now asking for um, proper videos of people declaring themselves as virtual visionary, specifically so that we can post them on the website and on the Facebook page. So if you'd like to do that, that would be great. And don't worry about your voice. Nobody likes their own voice. And no, exactly. Ted? Oh, I love the sound of my own voice. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I was just going to encourage Alfie actually to come on if he can do. Um, he says he's not high enough and whatever. Bless your heart. Behave. Um, if you wish to, that would be great to hear from you with a view to future guesting. And the same with Sandra and, and John David. Awesome if you can uh, And come Colin. On. Colin has a lot to say. Uh, absolutely. Love Colin, to hear you, Colin. Love to see you, Colin. Yeah, be cool. Colin, Colin. You missed that. Oh, Alfie, come on. Come on the show. You'll be more than welcome. If well, you come out with anything outrageous, we'll disconnect that. you. But no, Colin please. and JDP and whatever, yeah, it'd be great to see you and talk to you. Certainly Colin, because I haven't seen him in many, many years, something like 20, 25 years from prison service days. So don't be shy. We'll be gentle. We'll be kind. We'll be nice. And it'd be awesome to see and talk and communicate directly with you. Yeah. So um, one of the things that uh, we've talked about is this evening is the path, and you know all of our different pathways to coming to where we are today, and this platform is also about the path. It is about the path. It is. It's about, it's about taking your hand and walking with you on the path and encouraging you by sharing what we have and by share by having guests on who share what they have so you can be inspired and i feel that what's really interesting is that the path comes to us in a way mm -hmm. i mean i never started out trying to be a psychic I mean, I am a psychic, and I always was psychic, and I always applied that because it's part of my being. But when when I was growing up, I had to, I you know, decide to be something else because there wasn't a rubric. You know, you couldn't become a psychic, a professional psychic. So all those things that I did healing, psychology, art, esoteric studies, meditation, um, spirituality, different kinds of divinations, accumulation of knowledge, was driven by my desire and need to seek connection. Mm -hmm. And 
then it comes upon you. The pa you know when you realize, oh, I'm always on the path. I'm always on the path. But but the path is like, oh, I'm on the path. <laughs> you know, yeah. you have that aha moment of exactly. being there, and it, it. So this is very much a way of sharing with everybody that right. path. Right. And and what's good about the path, what I've learned about it, is that we just didn't get dropped out of the sky and just land wherever we landed and expected to do these these grand things. We actually orchestrated a lot of it and through the universal laws, the minute you were conceived and that imprint was starting to take hold in human form, uh, the minute those little feet hit the earth, the planet Earth, in the first breath you took, the universe started shifting so that it attracted to you exactly what you needed to go through to get where you came here to get to, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's <laughs> we are in control of that too, right? We can get distracted and, and all that kind of stuff. But really, the path is is where we are. It has nothing to well, it has everything to do with where we're going. But the path is actually anywhere that you are, and it's your conscious um, acceptance and and understanding of that that causes that epiphany to say, oh, here's the path. I'm on it. Whoa, mm -hmm. right? But yeah. you know, you have to grow into that awareness as well. Now we've got some things going on in the chat room. I just want to address here. Um, <laughs> Okay, Dan, well, that's really good to know. I'm I'm inclined to agree with you there. But, um, that's not something I'll say on air. <laughs> that's so funny. Um, Read the next one, Colin. About from Colin, or from yeah, Dan? Yeah, Colin. If you want to avoid Dan, <laughs> read read the Colin one. I'm not avoiding Dan. I thought I think Dan Dan's comment is pretty funny. It's just I that I yeah. read on the air. I'll read it if you want. What? Colin? No. I don't uh, mind. Colin, no, yeah. Colin Colin's is saying about the monetary thing, the monetary reimbursement. Uh, he said before that I've yeah, never asked for monetary really reimbursement. To, to touch Go ahead, Ted. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I just what, what he's saying that he's never asked for monetary reimbursement for sessions. Um, I have this gift for free, so I share it with those who seem to need it. And actually, that leads me on from what you, what both you ladies are saying about you know recognizing who you are and the path that you're on. Um, I, I'm very much aware that a lot of people have to make a living, um, as we all had to at some point. And I'm only at where I'm at now through a mixture of good fortune um, uh, and and the spiritual aspect of it and just sorry I'm going slightly out of sequence here but going back to what Nina asked me about my journey originally that at age seven or eight was the first time I thought to myself how wonderful it would be to put your hands on someone and to heal at that age I remember clearly in the playground a moment at which I thought that and put my hand out in front of me and thought how wonderful that would be now what happens and incorporating what Era said at one point at about that life gets in the way that was said to me by a very wise man 20 or 30 years ago the warning that relationships money politics etc can get in the way of it now I'm I've been doing what I'm doing for the last 10 or 15 years before that I had to be making a living, um, you know, bringing money in in order to have a house and a car and, and food on the table and everything like that. I, I'm not sure that I could have, even if I had been on that direction in my life to go and to become sort of spiritual healer, um, the, uh, not to mention that the, the, the reader aspect of it and, and uh, card reading and sort of... Um, Missed the mediumship aspect of it. I'm not sure that I would have been comfortable with an ink that there would be sufficient income, if anything, from doing that. So I think very often it comes to perhaps middle age, maybe sooner. I don't know, and I'm just speaking for myself and those around me. That that it's rare. I would say that you start at a young age and go straight into becoming a professional psychic or medium. You have to, one, in a sense, have life experience, but also to have got yourself in a position where you can support yourself, and then you can go by that very ethos 
that Colin mentions about monetary reimbursement. I've always been very much not about the money and I've had to be persuaded to receive or accept money as an energy exchange as it was explained to me not that long ago and that people pointed out that you've had to pay for your certificate, you had to pay for your insurance, you had to pay most recently to, pr to prepare this holistic center but even then I've done it out of um, legacies that I've received from my father's estate and my mother's estate now um, and I would rather do, I'm, I'm giving because I wish to give, I don't have to do this, I could lock those two front gates at the front of the house, sit back and live relatively comfortably without doing any of this but it's been my vision, my calling, my desire, my wish, my oomph that, that uh, allows me to do this so yeah for me personally money isn't isn't sometimes a necessary evil or people feel that they need to reimburse you um, simply because they're humans and, they're, and they've got to do it or sometimes they don't necessarily feel that they're getting value for money if you offer your services free of charge people might, not that I've ever received this sort of money but you imagine a healer who says look you know okay 20 quid for half an hour if I were a healer who said actually it's 200 pounds for half an hour there would be people I'm sure that would pay that because they think oh my god he is going to be offering me something very special well I wouldn't be offering anything different for 200 pounds than I would be for 20 because it's a gift from the spirit it's something I give it, it's miraculously powerful um, and, it, and, it, it, and it's awesome um, but money is a funny thing it, 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 it oils the wheels it facilitates many things fortunately but I think there's many people who work in the spiritual or are of service in the spiritual arena who are very iffy about money and, and understandably so because it's not not my way not not many people's way to be trying to make money out of it you know to become rich out of it or wealthy that's not <laughs> what it's about. well I'm gonna take the opposite point of view oh good <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. Well, in some ways it's opposite, in some ways it's not opposite. Um, I never set out to take things from people. I, I see that um, I studied, aside from my natural gift, I studied for 15 years before I started to give readings and offer healing to people and um, people wanted to come to see me and I was I felt that when I gave things away what I noticed was that people often didn't appreciate it they didn't feel that they had to work on themselves or work on it they wanted me to do it for them and I didn't think that that was correct I didn't think it was ethical and I feel that there has to be a monetary there has to be some kind of exchange and money is how we exchange energy and it allowed me to make a living to live and do what I do ethically professionally with a lot of um, how can I say um, I respect what I'm doing and I command respect for what I do and money is just a part of that and I'm able to support myself and my family well that's uh, the thing Nina you know if this is all I do and if I that's right paid for what I was doing I'd be homeless and I would mm -hmm. not be able to allow the message to get out as far and wide right mm -hmm. So, you know, it isn't that you're charging $3,000 a session. You are being taken care of by spirit. That's it, right? This is That's right. I'm I not getting rich from doing this, I'm telling you. <laughs> but I'm able to support myself. The thing is, is that people come to see us because they perceive that we can do something that they cannot do for themselves. Mm -hmm. That's the whole crux of, of the exchange. They see us being of service in a way that they cannot be of service to themselves. So they come and learn how to do it or they come and they seek solace or they come and get relief. Now, 
I look at my lawyer and I go to my lawyer because I perceive my lawyer can do something that I cannot do for myself. I do not have the wisdom, I do not have the knowledge, I do not have the wherewithal to do what my lawyer can do. Therefore, I pay my lawyer to do it. The same with a mechanic, right? You know, everybody wants to go off on the high road saying, well, it's God's gift, you can't charge if it's God's gift. I'm saying the mechanic has God's gift as far as I'm concerned because I can't fix my car. Oh, my lawyer has God's gift because he can do something legally for me that I can't do. Um, so it isn't, a, it isn't a matter, and I don't know where this dissolved into a greediness, that it's, and it's just because the line of work is not readily accepted. And if it was, then people would say, oh, well, it's, I guess it's my time to go and see that, that psychic or that medium or that healer because I'm feeling kind of off. We wouldn't think twice. But because there's this, this frame of stigma around, around the work that we do, we're not entitled to be paid. And that's where I draw the line. I, I just, you know, if you can do it and not get paid, more power to you. But I do not like it when people turn to me and say, well, you have God's gift and that's bad that you're charging for it. And I look at them and say, God gave me this ability. And I chose to use it. I didn't have to. I'm doing, the, therefore, what God wants me to do, and God will take care of me. And if that means charging, then that he's given me the ability to do that too. So, you know, there's just so much out there that just, it makes me want to tear my hair out sometimes, yeah. right? It's like I agree. I, it's service. You're it offering is. service. <laughs> and it is a way of serving divinity because there is no difference between what is divinity and what is in the physical plane and money just greases the wheels we're not in it for the money we're but not in it to get rich we're not in it to rip people off it's people's perception of what money is I mean money is energy it's an energy exchange like you, like you said and I happen to agree with that. But it's the same energy as the chairs we're sitting on. And I don't hear anybody outraged because they don't have enough chairs. They don't know where to get more. They don't know how long they can keep them. And how dare you have more chairs than me? Right? It, it just There's just this, this perception that money is so, 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 so bad. And really what that speaks to is the fact that some people have not really understood the power and the energy that they are because now they've given so much power over to the money that now it becomes all what drives them and so they see it everywhere they go. But really we are just giving a service. It's, it's if you go to your lawyer, go to the grocery store, you're going to pay, go to the mechanic, you're going to pay. Just because we are doing what we do then I'd be homeless if I wasn't getting paid. Don't and you think that, whoa, you know, like I'm, no, it's not lucrative by any stretch, right? Don't you think that being a mechanic, having mechanical <clears throat> talent is a God-given gift, or musical talent is a God-given gift, or being a great strategist is a God-given gift. They're all God-given gifts, and people have to study and take time to nurture those gifts. So, why should it be done for free? And as I said, I noticed when I gave things for free, they were not appreciated. No, and, and that's true. Um, and that's just the human psyche at play too, though. You know, hmm. like, again, you start talking about lawyers, and, and let's say I went to my lawyer and I pay $120 an hour, and I find out that you're paying $180. I'm thinking one of two things. I'm thinking, wow, yours must be better than mine. What are you getting that is so much more than what I'm getting out of my lawyer? Or I'm thinking, oh wow, she's really getting taken, right? <laughs> but you know, it's that's just the way it goes. The one thing that I do want to, Alfie is, is saying that he's ready to come onto the platform now. So should we bring Alfie on? Yeah, for a little while. Why don't we do that? Okay, Alfie, hope you have a question uh, handy. 
let's just see what we can do. And just remember to click your screen to accept and allow, and we'll be away to races, hopefully. Come on, Elby. Okay, we'll just keep talking. He should yeah. be here any moment now. Um, Interesting you saying about the mandatory side, and I think where Nina was going, and she says, well, maybe we're not going to be that far apart. I, I hear everything that you ladies say about it, and, and uh, it, it, it is each their own, and I, I did, did sort of say that um, it, this um, energy exchange was pointed out to me that, that would... Um, but would clarify it for me because I was always uncomfortable, as I say, just me personally with, with charging for something that I felt was a gift from God. But then I am in a position where I have alternative income, and so I'm very fortuitous in one sense, but I've worked for it in the other. So I think from what someone else said, oh, Alfie said he was booted off, so he's going to be back in again. Um, that that it, it's a matter of choice as to whether uh, you charge or you don't. On some occasions I say, well, a contribution, depending on the person's ability to pay. There are little old ladies who are not particularly well off. There are not little old ladies who aren't terribly well off or whatever. So if I'm in a position to say, look, you know, there doesn't have to be a charge if you're down on your luck or whatever, equally, um, my jury's out on this, as I say, because when it's a monetary exchange and people want value for money or expect value for money, um, then it's in the moment, I think, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. Well, you know, and that's the thing, and I'm glad you brought that up, actually, Ted, because what people don't realize is that I may charge because I need to pay my rent, I need to get groceries, I need to pay bills. End of story. Yeah. But what people don't know is that I get emails all the time from people who have questions who just need a little tiny bit of my time which turns out to be an hour, an hour and a half, right? I set aside an, enough time during the course of a month to offer complimentary sessions. It's not about the money but I do need to be prudent and understand that I need to to be responsible and pay my bills. So you don't hear about how many how many of us in this line of work are giving complimentary services or bargaining right. services. Um, you don't know how many fundraisers that we do because, you know, we're not out there saying, "Look at us, look how good we are." We're doing this for free, and you know, you should you should appreciate us. It has nothing to do with that. We do what we do, and because we happen to charge, then we're frowned upon because you know. <laughs> It, like Sandra, it's a Sandra makes a very valid point about one could always barter. You give a well, reading and they sort out your plumbing or cut grass. I mean, I've had that sort of thing often. We offered, do that all the time. We yeah. do that all the time. All the so, time. And work on a sliding scale for people who yeah. are on low incomes. Don't charge the full rate. They charge what they can afford. I mean, this isn't about taking people's money and you know using them for in a ne in a negative way money is a means of giving and receiving goodness There's balance in everything and i could i could have 3 full weeks of complimentary sessions and i'll be pulling my hair out because i have to make the rent and then all of a sudden spirit just says okay here you go boom 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 and my week is full and i earn the money that i need I don't earn extra. I don't earn the moon, right? I barely make it, but I make it every time. And That's right. you know, just following your instincts and listening to what what feels good and what is necessary. I'm here to be of service and not here to be a walking bank. You know, that's not part of the job. There's Alfie. Hi Alfie. Hello, Hello Alfie. Hi, Alfie. We can hardly hear you, Alfie, so if you'd like to turn up your sound a little bit. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. That's, that's good. Welcome. Uh, wicked. Hello, guys. Hiya. So, uh, I don't know what to so say. Did you have <laughs> a comment or a suggestion for a discussion? Or... Um, not really. 
I just thought I'd try out the. Um, I just took Ted's advice and got on the cam um, on the mic. That's How you cool. been? I like the um, um, transformation that you're doing for the show. It's thank you very fight. much. Thank you, Alfie. It's good to have you participate in the show. I, I will as as long as I've got the memory and I can make the time. That's and great. I'm free, but yeah. Alfie, what? while you're here, um, I just think it would be wonderful that, that, you, you, that you've made it one to get here and you've been a great supporter of the show and of, um, of David Icke and John David Parker and you've been here and visited at Turns and whatever. Um, perhaps say hi to everybody who's sort of in the chat room and, and tell us a little bit about what you do and, and a little bit about your spiritual journey in the last year or two because it's been quite interesting and phenomenal for you. Yeah. Um, I've been waiting for a long time for this to t cause there's so much going on now as as um as time goes on. But basically, as you know, but other people don't know, Dan, Lynn I can see, Nina and uh, Nina, Ara and some other people. Basically it was two thousand twelve when I um took my my blood test because my older brother thought I was a bit different from all the other my, my other brothers. So basically, I took my blood test from order from eBay, and uh, my blood group came up diff completely different to my brother's and my mum's. And then from there, I um, <coughs> I googled uh, the blood type, and I looked into theories and this information on the Rh negative bloodline and what it was exactly. And then when I came into the royal conspiracies, I came into other conspiracy theorists, um, David Dyke and people like that. And um, first time I ever watched him on camera on YouTube, I was drawn to him like I knew, I felt like I was him, being a younger version. And mm -hmm. uh, like I knew he was in his 50s, and I knew I was in tw my tw early 20s, I am 26. And I didn't come from a background from him. I've come, f well, I come from folks in Kent. I've not had the best of life, but I've not had the worst. So I'm not educated like him, you know. It, He's been places, got places, but me saying that I'm going places now. Like I'm not going places physically, but mentally I am, and I'm talking to people, sharing my knowledge, and where 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 all the dots are connecting up, basically. Like I res I resonate to David White so much, and I cannot wait till I meet him. I'll be so happy, and. Uh, Basically, yeah, Ted, as, you, as Ted knows, I've really got a good healing gift. And um, um, many people would know about the grey aliens. Well, there's a lot of conspiracies out there about the grey aliens as well. And I had only a reading about a week ago um, from um, a reader called Sue Watchford. And uh, she's saying that my guides are... Um, revealing their self to me now because it's for my time to like know who they are sort of thing and where am I, where am I going because I knew I was a healer I knew I could you know obviously from healing you can step up to be a psychic medium blah 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 and you can choose your own path from there but I knew there was a bigger higher thing I had to go and do but at the same time I'm thinking I'm him I'm me this is David Dyack this is what's going on in the world I think I'm a bit whoopy loo and then all of a sudden I'll get this message at the time about me meeting someone beginning with T. And then a year and year and a half after, this is like talk about back about a year ago now, this is when I come across um, Ted from from Facebook. And as he said in the show a few weeks back, a little while ago, um, if it wasn't Facebook and the internet, that wouldn't get my name out and I wouldn't uh, receive little hints, um, little tips, little hints, like everything on the internet, half of it is an illusion to mess up your head, like the TV, but then there's always truth in it, and I've got this ability to separate the, tr um, the truth from the lies, basically, and i just got so much to say, but I'm a nerves going everywhere, like... You must no, no, you're doing great. If you're psychic, you're medium, so you, you know, you've yeah. got harder jobs than me. But you, you're like, doing great, yeah, Alfie. What I had two weeks ago, 
yeah, ten. Mm-hmm. Um, two weeks ago, I had this reading with Sue, and she was telling me that I've got a grey alien. So I started researching about the greys, and I know a lot of people are saying they're they're here for a good reason as well as a bad reason. Now I've looked into that, and there's tens of thousands of different species of alien races, whatever races, species up there. Same as down on planet Earth, we've got different blood groups, got different DNA, different characteristics, traits, etc. So anyway, all I know is every day I'm helping someone and all every day I know I'll feel good when I get up in the morning or, you know, I don't feel cursed in life. So whether that, you know, someone might, might want to see for that grey alien to be, you know, a part of the anarchy or the reptilian squad that's going around the lizards and that, but that's up to them to think that. I don't think that. I, and I also know, and I I telepathically get these things in my idea, and I know straight away that David Dyke is, is guided by these ultimate grey aliens and not the bad ones. And we don't get out there, which I want to start getting out there, because it's bugged me all my life to think, why am I different? Why am I different? Yeah, I was diagnosed Asperger's syndrome, so I was different there. But I was digging deep into my illness, and that's a load of labels, again, like you were saying earlier. Um, it's funny that I said that, but I was labelled Asperger's syndrome. So I had to look into that. And then just everything connected up to the indigo children, what what the indigo children are about, and where, roughly when did they come from the 1984s, where I come, 1988. So I was four, four years in for the transition. And then it's only from... Like everyone asks me, like who I've been gays with, what's changed me? Because I wouldn't say I was a bad person, but I wasn't a good person. I wasn't doing better than what I should have been as a human being, and that's what I do now. Because I appreciate and I am open up to spirit, my my higher self, myself, as well as beings around me. You know, and uh, it's a learning curve for everyone, and not everyone is ready to be awakened. Unless I'm wrong or someone wants to say something, like you're more than welcome to just give me Alfie, your opinion. But this yeah, is how, that's Alfie, how I was it. Alfie, can I just uh, just break in there for a moment? Um, what what you covered actually in a very short space of time reminds me of what David Icke used to be back in the day because there's so many various sort of um, subject areas. Uh, what I'll say to the listeners and viewers is that I met this guy a couple of years ago. Um, watch him. Watch him on Facebook. Watch him develop over the next few years, um, because he is without without a doubt a phenomenon in his own right. And there he is actually on video now. Um, keep an eye on what he's saying. Some of it's rather random. Some of it's quite extreme. Sometimes people might think, you know, you know, a little bit crazy. And Alfie accepts that I have these views. We're we're, we're great friends. But watch this guy because he's going to go places. He's already doing amazing things. Um, he's got medicine man healing abilities. I'm getting huge chills that I'm talking about him now. Um, and we have a, we are going to be having him on the show because uh, at some time in the relatively near future, because as you can tell, there's a lot of information he wants to impart to everybody. Um, a lot of it. And and we'll we'll do it in we'll do it in a sequence on, on a on a future show, Alfie. So you get a, a, a true platform to to explain uh, your thinkings, of which there are many, um, and focused in and individually dealt with. Um, I know, and I believe Air and Nina know that you you've got a lot to share with with us all um, out there and to us individually as as the co-host here. Um, I'll hand over to Aaron or Nina if you'd like to ask Alfie a question or thank him for contributing. Well, I'd like to say something, Alfie. I think that you bring up a very good point um, with respect to indigo children, the evolution of souls. We've been talking about pathways and we've been talking about evolution in this program. And when I was growing up, I didn't have, even though I was gifted, I didn't have the opportunities that you and your generation of souls have to develop um, because we had unconscious parents. You know, the population was not talking about psychic and spiritual things in, in the, in the, in an, in the open, more open way that it is now. And there wasn't, 
there has been an evolution of social consciousness with respect to these matters and we've had influxes of you know indigo children crystal children um, and very old souls you can see these children when they're born they come in you know looking old <laughs> in and looking at at um, looking at you with a great deal of focus in a way that babies when I remember seeing them never had in the same in quite that same way and their ability to do things and their ability to know things is being nurtured now because of all the work that spiritual adventurers have been carrying out so you're really fortunate because you come into it into a time when people already r ripened to an extent and in the flow of civilization where that evolution can accelerate because that knowledge is available readily available in a way it always was covered over or kept, kept secret yep very spot on I can yeah I understand that like yeah like um like yeah yeah I've got, Basically, I've been put on the earth and learnt my lessons, or brought up and got to this right time at the right space for the mass. What well, I call it, the mass consciousness awakening, because every I think and I feel every century, decade, whatever time time we've had on planet Earth, I feel every human being has awoken, and it's a work a, a awakening curve for everyone, and it always will be. People say to me like, one day we'll, you know come harmony and all this like and don't get me wrong I'm not negative but I don't think it will be I don't feel like it will be the way people want it be it to be because at the same time we're awakening and we're helping others out when we have not got enough people and enough enough ability and enough programming or whatever because we don't want to program people we want to give opinions views and then let them have less say and we don't control what's going on TV. This is why we, I'm glad we've got this thing going on. It's saying to look forward to Sunday and not watching the TV because if if I ain't got nothing to do on the internet or I just want to take my mind off the spiritual side of me, I'll go and watch TV because that's the material, the subliminal, the the illusion of life and the not going nowhere in life like I used to. And yeah. I, I'd do a bit of smoke and that, and see yeah, I'd stay in, but, you know, I'd rather be doing that than going out, getting drunk, and toxic, toxicating my bloody full, um, pineal gland up, like, what's going on? I'll give these people a headache around my town, <laughs> like, because all my friends, they drink, they drink alcohol, and I don't, I'm just a smoker, and because, what I, like, when I smoke weed and that, it helps me to think a lot. I swear to God, if, like, if the government gave, ch not children, but like, you know, from teens to adults, whatever, a choice from certain medication to marijuana smoking or marijuana taking in tea cakes, shit, like, stuff like that. If they'd done that, the people wouldn't be slim like me because I was on Ritalin from the age of 12 to the age of 16 to 17. And then the, the government basically are the higher, high, high off the figures but they control the doctors, the doctors control me or the people and he controlled me like a puppet and he just took me off the, my Ritalin, my medication at the time that I was relying on every day. It's, you know, if you're a smoker and you don't go without a cigarette on that day or drink or whatever you do, yeah, you're going to be craving for that. So where I don't do Ritalin now, like since that age, but that's been years ago now, so I don't crave for anything speedy, rush or anything, I'm more of a mellow guy and it helps my spiritual stuff but, mm. but that stuff that Ritalin does damage our health and our and it makes people slim and like if they you know prescribe the marijuana whatever way they want to do it it will help people think wiser more out of the box you know but I understand also why they you know do what they do but they don't go right the real right way around it the government I mean like yeah, I don't know if anyone's aware of Snoop Dogg. 
this is a little example, Snoop Dogg is one, uh, you know, he comes from a background of East Coast gangster land and all that, and he smokes marijuana yeah, and all that. Now they've legalized it over a certain place in America. They, the Illuminati are using him as a puppet to promote marijuana now over, over in America. Now, in the last few years, we've been arrested, searched, everything, busted house, gone to jail, whatever, over a bit of marijuana. They should be doing that for guns and what's hurting people on the streets and not selling the drug, drugs to the gangs in the beginning. You know, the world's messed up. And I'm lucky I come from this, but with this background, but I was lucky I didn't get involved in too much. So bang, spot spot on what Nina was yeah. saying that I'm, you know, I've just got here in the right time. Well, you know, and it is an, a, a learning curve for everyone. It, it just that there's some yes, <laughs> that are coming through with a, being more aware. And it's interesting that yeah. when you say this isn't a message of doom and gloom. Nor should it have to be, because the universe, there's a duality to everything. And so in as much as we can focus on what's going wrong and what isn't good and, and you know what needs to be changed, we can also look at what's really good. Because just as much as we see the bad stuff that's going on, there's also good that's going on. It has to be in balance. Just that our perception is that that's typically what there's more of when there isn't. When it comes to the alien factor, I, I absolutely love the fact that you bring this up because aren't we all aliens in nature? And <laughs> we really are. And you know, there there might be ten thousand species out there, and there's good and bad. There has to be because it has to be in balance, and it's your vibration that will attract in whichever ones that are going to work with you, right? So, you know, we, we have more power and control than what we understand, and it's really wonderful to, to be able to get that kind of perspective happening for a lot of people who are dealing with a lot of fear in a lot of these particular areas. I am just so happy that you came on and and let us see you and let us speak with you. You have a lot to say. That's that's evident. And we're just going to move you back now into the chat room, Alfie. Uh, we're going to be closing up shop here very very shortly. So thank you once again for helping us out today. We really appreciate you. Thank God you bless. for helping. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for stepping up. Nina, I've lost the ability to move back. So if you could I will, do that for me, I'll move him back. Yeah, thank you. Oh, no, he's back. He's out. Yeah, he went. He went. He oh. went. <clears throat> yeah, so um, this has been extraordinary today. It's been, we've been all over, been all over the place, haven't we? We've been evolving. We have. This conversation <laughs> has evolved and sort of morphed into all sorts of different things. And it's really been interesting and the archived viewers that are going to be watching this after the fact, they have not been privy to the excellent, excellent conversation that has been going on in the chat room. Yes. And, you know, so we encourage those archived viewers, if you possibly can, if it's within your time frame to do so, please join us live because we care about what you think and we care about what you have to say and we care about what you want to see more of. Okay? So The other thing I'd like to remind our archive viewers is that on our Facebook page is always posted we have a time clock a world time clock so wherever you are in the world whether it's 9 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time or uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 1 p.m. in um, Pacific Time we're there for you, or wherever you are in the world. Uh, we want you to join us. We want you to join in. And we appreciate that you're looking at the archive show, but wouldn't it be great to get your own reading or to share a bit of your knowledge as a virtual visionary? We'd love to have you participate. If you absolutely cannot participate, then why not send us an email? Tell us what you're thinking. Tell us what you'd like to see more of. And stay tuned, everybody, because we are going to come out with um, some new things, and we want to keep you in the loop, the Virtual Vision FM loop, and we've just found that there are certain ways that we can do that that are 
fun. So yeah, and don't forget, we would love to get your video, your YouTube video, of you declaring yourself to be the virtual visionary. Ted? Yeah, what a great show. And those two hours have absolutely flown by, and we could have carried on talking for another two hours, I'm sure. Bless you, Alfie. God bless you, and thank you for stepping up. That was really interesting, and in the future, I've no doubt we're going to have you on a guest and uh, focus on each and every subject that you, you cover. Um, you're a great guy. You're a phenomenon in your own right, and uh, as I say, thank you so much for stepping up, and everyone could actually see and hear you for a few minutes. Um, ladies, it's been fascinating. I've learned a lot, actually, tonight, various things that you ladies come up with, and I go, ooh, actually, that really resonates. So I'm always learning. I'm always getting new ideas about, about all sorts of things in life, and I think that that's important to be open to, to possibilities and, uh, uh, you know, and not be just sort of set where you're at, and, and that's where this show does that. To everyone in the chat, from John David Parker to Sandra, who is my virtual body, I'll bless her heart, and I love it a bit. It's never met her as yet, but it may burst the bubble as and when I do meet her, so... <laughs> We may stay forever like this. Um, and to everyone else from Dan and uh, Colin, my friend. Uh, yeah, ladies, thank you. Thank you to the chat room. I look forward to next week when, you know, I have quiet days on a Sunday sometimes. And I'm a little bit weary just before 9 o'clock. And then I get re-energized for these, these two hours, guests or otherwise. So, uh, yeah, great show. I love it, even though I'm a co-host, I can say that. Um, thank you. See you all next week. God bless. All right, and next week, I will not be here on the show next week. Uh, Nina and Ted will be driving the bus on this one. And yes. our guest next week is Peter Langhorn. He's a voice vibrationist, is he not, Nina? Yes, he is. He's a, he's a medium, and he works with his guides. He has two principal guides, and he does healing. So... If any of you feel that you would like to get some healing, then you can, too can come on our webinar guest platform, just as Alfie did today. And through your voice vibration, he will give you um, messages and some healing. And that could be a fantastic boon for you and uh, wonderful viewing, sharing with the rest of us. So please join us next week to see Peter Langhorn Medium. All right. Thanks again, everyone, for being here, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.